So you think you want to become a dentist. What are some tips or characteristics that might be involved in making you a successful dentist and making it through dental school? Come with me. I'm going to share that information with you today. My name is Dr. Michelle Chartier and I graduated from USC School of Dentistry in 1995 and I've owned my own practice since 1999. It's been a long road and it's been a fun one. So if you enjoy this type of material, please consider subscribing. And if this video is interesting to you, please click the like button. If you have any questions or comments or even have some characteristics that you think is necessary in a dentist, please leave them in the comments below. Let's get right into this and have some fun. First and foremost, as a dentist or aspiring dentist, you can't be squeamish about working in somebody's mouth. I can't tell you how many people have said to me, Oh my gosh, you work in people's mouths, that's so gross. How do you do it? Uh, quite honest <laughs> with you, I don't have any issue with working in people's mouths, especially since I have the proper personal protective equipment to do so and be safe. But things like pus and blood and decay and tongues and teeth and all that does not disgust me whatsoever. I'm happy to work in patients' mouths. And if you're not, that might be an issue because as a dentist, that's where you'll be working. Can you see me back here? <laughs> science. At least this is dental science right here and part of my personal library. Basically, you have to have an aptitude for science and math to become a great dentist. You're gonna start with a Bachelor of Science in undergraduate college. You're gonna probably major in biology, or chemistry or a combination thereof. Your freshman year, you're gonna take Bio 201, Chem 101, and some type of math. You're gonna to have to get through math up to the calculus level so that you can take calculus-based physics to complete your Bachelor of Science degree. Bio 201 and Chem 101 are both what I would call a weeder class. It weeds a lot of students out who think that they are going to become pre-dental or pre-med students. So these are all building blocks to get to the next step. Bio 201 and Chem 101 typically are taught in a lecture hall and you will find by the end of the semester less than half of those students are still in the course or aspiring doctors and dentists, which is fine, but it is very rigorous. Uh, the pace is very fast and furious and you have to be ready to learn a lot of material very quickly. It would be a huge challenge if you are unable to do well in this type of um, science and math learning uh, program because you're going to have a hard time even when you get to dental school. So basically, I was one of those people who was an aspiring pre-dental student, clearly, and uh, the first lecture we had, we were told we were going to have a test over the first four chapters, and I hadn't even cracked open the book. So two days later, I was having a test over 150 pages of material, and, um, I didn't do well on that first test, but the good news is it was a huge wake up call to me. And while I got my first failing grade in my whole entire life on that first test, I was able to turn things around and really get my act together so that I could make it through the rigor. I was awarded as a senior in 1991 graduating class with the Biology Student of the Year, which means I had the highest GPA in um, my graduating class in biology. It can be done. Uh, you're also going to have to endure organic chemistry, which is a huge challenge. Uh, other courses that you're going to need to take or should take to help you through dental school is biochemistry, anatomy, physiology, microbiology, histology, embryology, and genetics. Fun stuff, <laughs> fun stuff. Uh, because when you get to dental school, those courses are gonna be part of your curriculum along with the dental sciences. Now, this is my personal library, so um, this is only the resources that I still utilize today, so there was probably a stack this high. You probably would never have seen me, a wall of books that we had. Now, clearly today, a lot of 
uh, us learn online and this information certainly is available online. I just happen to keep these resources because I have little tabs and little sticky notes uh, where I uh, can quickly get this information. So you're going to bring your foundation of uh, the biology and chemistry to dental school and then add in these topics as well. So you're gonna have removable prosthodontics, pediatrics, orthodontics, endodontics, uh, dental anatomy, physiology of occlusion, oral medicine, management of TMD, treatment of occlusal diseases, and oral pathology. It's a lot of science. So if you love science and you're good at it, you're gonna make a great dentist. In order to become a great dentist, It'd be really important that you're very artistic. That's the left side of your brain. So we've already talked about math and science being part of the equation to get through dental school, but becoming a great dentist really requires you to be quite artistic. You're designing smiles and recreating teeth. So you're working with porcelain and composite, which is a tooth colored filling material on a daily basis. So if you like to carve or paint or do origami or even draw, this shows that you have fine motor skills and you're quite artistic. I'd like to share with you something that we do in dentistry so you'll know very quickly if you excel at the fine motor skills that are necessary for becoming a great dentist. We actually took a block of ivory wax, so tooth colored wax material, and we had to use our dental instruments to construct a tooth that is three dimensional from a one dimensional picture. This was not fun. It took probably 20 hours to complete. And I'll do a close up of those images. So having some type of aptitude at artistic and creative drawing and coloring and uh, carving would be really important in your dental school adventure. One thing that I have found very helpful in my practice is that I value my dental health. And as a dentist, I think it's important for you to do the same thing. If you don't value dental hygiene, meaning you clean your teeth, you floss them regularly, you get them cleaned by a licensed professional hygienist. And if you need to do things orthodontically or restorative, meaning crowns or fillings, and also maybe even whiten your teeth, I think it'd be very hard for you to let your patients know how much you value what you do because you need to walk the walk and talk the talk. Uh, I have patients all the time tell me I, I want my teeth to look just like yours. And to me, I think it's so important to emulate what you're hoping to achieve for your own patients so they can see that this can easily be achieved for them as well. A really important thing as a dentist is to be able to be criticized but not take it personally. Sometimes patients have expectations that are different than what you think their expectations are and you can't always exceed their expectations, although that's what we're trying to do on a daily basis. My personal mantra is strive for perfection, accept excellence. Every day we are subject to criticism based on sub sometimes subjective things. Thankfully, dental school is all about subjective criticism. There are numerous times where you will get a bad grade from a professor that you don't think your work was worthy of that low grade. Sometimes you even get a low grade because your patient didn't show up. Things that are completely out of your control. When you have those experiences, you can't take it personally. You cannot become depressed. You can't let that stop you from moving ahead. If you can master that and become accepting of criticism and use that as a challenge to strive to become better the next time, I think you'll make a great dentist. Excellent communication skills. Being able to have a conversation. All of that is so important as a dentist. Now many of us dentist types tend to be very quiet introverts. Unfortunately, being a dentist, you can't be an introvert. You need to have great communication skills with your team. That team might be comprised of just yourself and your assistant, but it also might include the hygienists and administrative personnel as well. Another time that you need great communication skills is 
articulating to your patients their dental needs for care and what would happen if they don't elect to do the dental care that you're prescribing. I often have to call lab technicians to uh, let them know my expectations for a lab case and also referring doctors to know more about the patient or any information that I can share with them that will make my patient's outcome better. Communication, it's so important and as an introvert, sometimes that can be more of a challenge, but if you have great communication skills, you're gonna make a great dentist. Being able to multitask and stay on time is an incredible attribute if you hope to become a dentist. On a daily basis, we have a schedule and we have to stay within the parameters of that schedule so our patients aren't left waiting for our treatment. On a daily basis, I see about 25 patients a day. Half of those are in hygiene, so each hour I might be seeing three or four patients per hour. I have to focus on what I'm doing, break my focus, go do something else, stay focused, come back to that thing that I broke my focus from, and so on and so forth. There's also phone calls, there's doctors who are referring to us, there's also doctors that I'm referring to that I need to speak with, I might have to verify a prescription at a pharmacy, I might even have to talk to my lab technicians about a case that I'm working on. Sometimes I have to also plan out for the next day's schedule and make sure we have all the materials we need to properly perform that procedure. There's a lot that goes into each and every day and we like to make sure that we exceed our patient's expectations so we maintain our schedule. And in order to do that, I have to multitask. If you have that attribute, you're gonna make a great dentist. If you exhibit all seven of these characteristics, congratulations, you're a unicorn. <laughs> if not, that's okay. You will develop a lot of skills as you go along in this journey to become a dentist. But if you have them already, Congratulations, you'll do great in this profession. If you have any questions, please list them in the comment section below. If you haven't already, please like this video and consider subscribing to my channel. I look forward to speaking with you again about this great profession of dentistry. And until then, keep smiling.